In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Nice to see you all. Welcome to everybody in the cheap seats in the hall as well, uh, and everyone watching at home. Hopefully it won't be too long until we're able to uh, sit next to each other and all, all get into church safely. This morning, our Mass is offered for Linda running, so we keep Linda especially in our prayers. To prepare ourselves to celebrate our Sunday Mass together this morning, let's call to mind our sins and seek God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We give, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Saviour of the human race is with you in your glory, may experience, as he promised, until the end of the world, his abiding presence amongst us, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One day Peter stood up to speak to the brothers. There were about 120 persons in the congregation. Brothers, the passage of scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit, speaking through David, foretells the fate of Judas, who offered himself as a guide to the men who arrested Jesus, after having been one of our number and actually sharing this ministry of ours. In the book of Psalms it says, let someone else take his office. We must therefore choose someone who has been with us the whole time that the Lord Jesus was travelling around with us. Someone who was with us right from the time when John was baptising until the day when he was taken up from us. And he can act with us as a witness to his resurrection. Having nominated two candidates, Joseph knows Basavus, whose surname was Justus, and Matthias, they prayed. Lord, you can read everyone's heart. Show us, therefore, which of these two you have chosen to take over this ministry and apostolate, which Judas abandoned to go to his proper place. Then they drew lots for them, and as the lot fell to Matthias, he was listed as one of the twelve apostles. The word of the Lord. Response over the psalm, the response is, The Lord has set his sways away in heaven. My soul give thanks to the Lord, or my being bless his holy name. My soul give thanks to the Lord, and never forget all his blessings. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong is his love for those who fear him. As far as east is from west, so far does he remove our sins. The Lord has set his sway in heaven, and his kingdom is ruling over all. Give thanks to the Lord, all his angels, mighty in power, fulfilling his word. Second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. John. My dear people, since God has loved us so much, we too should love one another. No one has ever seen God, 
But as long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will be complete in us. We can know that we are living in him and he is living in us because he lets us share his spirit. We ourselves saw and we testify that the Father has sent his Son as Saviour of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. We ourselves have known and put our faith in God's love towards us. Towards ourselves, God is love, and anyone who lives in love lives in God, and God lives in him. The word of the Lord. Father, keep them true to your name, 
so that they may be one just as we are one. One for all, but all for one. Isn't that what Jesus is praying? So that we could all be as one as the Father and the Son are. Imagine what the world would be like if we lived as one, just as the Father and Son live in complete oneness. The unity that exists in the relationship between the Father and the Son is a unity to which we are all called and for which all of us here this morning are created. When we cease to live in that unity, we are living in a manner that is contrary to how we are called to live in this world. Where there is war, division, hate and violence, we are living in a manner that goes against the oneness and unity for which we are all created to live. But when we take steps towards creating peace, unity and harmony, we are on the path to fulfilling the vocation to which we are all called. This week, we've seen in the news the Holy Land edge ever closer to all out war. And we must especially pray for peace in Jesus' home. On the same day that Israeli-Palestinian crisis was exploding this week, an inquest in Belfast was reporting on mass killings by the British Army in Belfast half a century earlier. This was to become known as the Ballymurphy Massacre, which took place in 1971, when ten Catholics, including a young mother and a priest who went to anoint the dying, was shot in the back and killed in the working class district of Ballymurphy in West Belfast. The British government and the army claimed for years that the dead were IRA gunmen and had been throwing petrol bombs at them. But the inquest determined this week that all the dead were in fact completely innocent civilians, not linked with the IRA at all and that the army's actions were totally unjustified. Truth is what leads to justice, and justice is what leads to peace. An important parallel between Northern Ireland and Israel Gaza today is that, in both cases, grossly excessive military force was used, is being used to solve political problems that it only succeeds in exasperating. In the case of the Ballymurphy shootings, which took place during the introduction of internment without trial by the British government, our government, in many of our lifetimes, it managed only to delegitimize itself and to spread hatred against itself and act as a recruiting sergeant for the IRA. And thank God the Good Friday Agreement has been signed and it may be a very hard and very tense peace, more than ever after Brexit, but we do now have peace in Northern Ireland. And peace must be worked at every day, with mercy at its heart, if peace is to continue. As for the Holy Land, we must pray, pray, and pray for peace there. I am confident that where God was born, hope is born. He brings hope. Where God is born, peace can surely also be born. And where peace is born, there is no longer room for hatred or war. How then can we as individuals, as families, as parishioners, and as citizens in Britain work towards accomplishing these steps towards peace in our own lives? How can we live in the oneness that Jesus prayed for in today's Gospel so that we live as the Father and Son are one? How can we live in that oneness that is God? I think the answer comes from the second reading we heard this morning. The answer can seem so simple and obvious that we can sometimes forget or ignore the advice or rather, the commandment from Jesus that we receive in the scriptures. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God. We must then love one another so as to be one, 
and remain in God. Love one another, one for all and all for one. Just as in our lifetime we have witnessed the historic steps taken towards peace in Northern Ireland, we too must take steps every day. The steps we take towards unity don't always have to be with such magnificent diplomatic preparation Jerry Adams and Ian Paisley in the past. Nor do we have to wait 50, 60 or 70 years to take those steps. We are called to that oneness now and in our everyday lives. It can be all too easy to fall into the trap of accepting our situations of broken relationships and divisions and not taking the first step towards love. Someone might have upset us or wronged us or hurt someone we've loved. So we just remove ourselves away from that person. Sometimes that can be the right thing to do for a healthy, balanced life. But what is never healthy or well balanced is to hold on to bitterness and anger. It's important and a very important step towards peace to let go of any bitterness anger in our hearts. It may take time to let resentment drift from our hearts, but we must take the first step towards doing so. We must take the first step towards peace. Let our readings today and the Eucharist that we celebrate together inspire us to take the first step towards healing any brokenness that exists in our lives, or in our families, and in our world. Each step of love is a step towards living in the oneness to which you and I are called to live. Each one of us is called to work towards the oneness for the good of all. And when someone makes that step, even when that step takes place in another community, like Belfast or Gaza, the other side of the world, we all benefit from that step towards unity, towards oneness. Although Jesus was not one of the three musketeers, he was certainly the one for all. Are we all then called to be for the one? The motto of the three musketeers is one that rings true from sacred scriptures from a 19th century French novel and from the lives of each one of us today. Love one another, one for all and all for one. Let us stand and profess what we believe, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated to the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life of the last. Amen. Gathered together as one, let us bring our prayers and petitions before the Lord in our bidding prayers this morning. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Lord has given us the spirit of wisdom. May our world grow in knowledge of him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Jesus, our Lord, has promised us baptism in his spirit. May that spirit inspire our nation to use the diversity of our gifts for the spread of God's grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, our Lord, has ascended to heaven, but he will return. May our faith commun community always be ready to welcome him. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our
our Lord has loved us and continues to love us. May each of us remain in that love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for peace in Gaza and throughout the Middle East. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In a moment of quiet, let's bring all our own prayers and petitions before the Lord in the silence of our own hearts. We ask Mary, our Blessed Mother, to pray with us and for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Lord our God, we ask that you hear and receive all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotion we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exults in your prayers, and even the heavenly powers with all the angels sing together in the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, theory of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to you who held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all of the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died, especially those for whom we now remember. Welcome these and all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. United as a family together in faith, let us pray the family prayer Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom be. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from it. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to all the world, free us by this, your most holy body and blood, from all of our sins and protect us from every type of evil in the world. Keep each of us here faithful to you and never let a single one of us ever be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away all the sins of the world. Blessed are those that are called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Hear us, O God, our Saviour, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole Church what has already come to pass in Christ her head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. So again, thank you to your patience. Bit of a crowd in the hall today, which is a good sign that more people are feeling more comfortable to come back to church. So thank you to everybody uh, in, in the hall and all those watching at home. Hopefully a few more weeks of this and uh, please God restrictions will be lifted and we all be able to actually sit next to people in church uh, on the 21st of June onwards. So we keep praying uh, that that will happen when we're all allowed back in together. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Let's go in the peace and joy of Christ. Thanks, everyone. Have a lovely Sunday. Thank you.